Well, Jeffrey, we have done a number of videos now on calling, and every single one of them we've done in front of this background with a potter's hands on a pot. And I want to talk a little bit about this because, you know, as far as artisans go, pottery is a beautiful example of someone who really must be skilled at the work, yeah. must love the work. Frankly, there's a lot of repetition in the work, yes. you know, and, and so there's there's somehow going through what we might call the drudgery or the repetitiveness unto the artisanship and the beauty. I want to talk about excellence mm -hmm. in the midst of your calling. If I am in the place God has for me, I think excellence is going to be one of those things that I'm going to feel free to continue to cultivate. Am no I right? question. No question. The, of course, the first thing, Jeff, that pops out in my mind is Paul's letter to Timothy. Timothy's a young guy. He's just starting to enter his calling. Evidently, uh, Timothy was teaching as well. Mm -hmm. And Paul admonishes Timothy. He said, look, take these gifts that were given to you by the mm -hmm. laying on of hands by the Presbytery. In other words, there were some leaders in the context of this emergent church that laid hands on Timothy and in some ways kind of supernatural, mystically transferred gifting, Holy Spirit power, whatever this was, and we can get into some theological wrangling, which is I'm not interested at all. But he said, take these gifts that were now given to you. The point is it's from outside in. It's mm -hmm. not you just mm -hmm. natural, but some of these gifts and be absorbed in them. Take great pains with this gifting. In his case, it was a teaching gift so that your progress may be evident to everybody and you'll ensure salvation not only for yourself, but for those who hear you. In other words, it's so significant your calling and the excellence in what you, which you do it, and that it actually has implications beyond your own personal increasing well-being within the kingdom, but also for those who hear you. And James says something similar. He said, look, not many of you should desire to teach because you gotta recognize you'll incur a stricter judgment. So, Although this was in the context of the teaching gift, I think it, it, it goes across all boundaries. Whatever our gift is, it's having impact, at, at either adversely if done without excellence or positively if done with excellence, excellence always being Christ in us, emptying ourselves, being sensitive to His voice, and doing the work. I mean, there is, you know, the Bible talks about being a, a diligent workman, able to handle accurately the word of truth. So. Whatever your gift is, if you do it with a full intention and a full heart, it has broad implications. And so excellence is huge. Excellence is huge in every area, and I think that's just common sense. When we see something being done with excellence, we admire it, we look to it. We actually, whether we're cognizant or not, give platform for people to speak that do, do it with excellence. If you were to go out and say a difference between a, a Rory McElroy, for instance, right now, or, or a similar pro who doesn't work on his game and out, goes out and shoots 85 and it's clearly he's just <laughs> you know, all over the place. Yeah. Who are you gonna, who, your ears are gonna perk up at excellence, even in a secular sense. So even much more so in my view, in a spiritual sense, from a spiritual perspective of calling. Yeah, that's funny because that same idea crossed my mind is, you know, sometimes we, we say, well, if the Lord's really gifted us how much do I really have to work at this? And yet we know, say, uh, players on, on the tours who are believers, mm -hmm. and, and they would say, well, yes, the Lord's given me this gifting, and yet they go to the practice range. Yeah, no question about it. And they spend it. their hours there, and they put their time in, and they cultivate that excellence. Absolutely. Isn't that what John said? Those who practice righteousness are righteous. Mm. There is a practicing element to the spiritual life in general. Uh, if you've never explored the spirit of the disciplines by Dallas Willard, or there's been some other mm -hmm. excellent books written about disciplines, but it really is. And you can see that in the life of Jesus. So this is not done in a vacuum. This is done with diligence, getting up, uh, repetition. Uh, some people like, and I think sometimes the evangelical church misses a little bit of the those kind of prayers that are consistent prayers that are prayed over time and prayed over, they don't do any good if you're not reciting them with a sense of really paying attention to what you're saying, but sometimes those liturgical prayers are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, it really drives something down in your spirit, learning the word, learning to really hear his voice, all those things. I think Paul would tell us, Lynx players and 
2012, 13, hey, pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to your life. Be absorbed in your calling. Do it with excellence. It has impact on people beyond yourself. Uh, this could be dramatic. There could be people's lives that are impacted by your excellence and how you apply yourself, Re irrespective of what your discipline or your calling is, whether it's behind the scenes or in front of a camera, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Wow. So I, I, it's great because I'm motivated in the little things as much as the big things because I recognize those are all contributing to what God's And why to do we want to do it? Paul said it. We make it our ambition to be pleasing to Him. He died for us. Everything is from Him, through Him, and to Him. Everything. He's, he is beyond anything we can ever imagine, think, or comprehend. He saved us from nothing. He created us out of nothing and then saved us from our own negligence. How could we not respond in a desire to please our Father? Well, we got to understand who our Father is, that's for sure. Some people imagine me a mean, tyrannical God. But once you get to know Him, it'll be no different than my kids are with me. They love to please their Father. How much more our Heavenly Father.